hello everyone you're welcome back to this channel in this video you're going to solve this question i have here on the board the question says a hundred pounds force acts as shown on a hundred pounds block on an inclined plane the coefficients of friction between the block and the plane are given us that the coefficient of static friction is 0 0.25 and that of kinetic friction is 0 0.20 Determine whether the block is in equilibrium and find the value of the friction force. So let's look at how we are going to go about this question. So I will start by drawing a free body diagram for this figure that has been given to us. Okay, so let's look at that. So I'm going to draw the, the block on the inclined plane. Okay, so that's the block. So now let's, let's indicate the forces that will be acting on the block. So we are going to have the weight force, okay? The weight force, which is the 300 pounds, okay? And then we are going to have what? A normal force. And this normal force will be what? Perpendicular to the inclined plane, okay? So it's going to be something like this. So this will be the direction for the normal force, right? So if you indicate it, you are going to have the normal force to be here. So this will be the normal force. Okay. So now it's left with this applied force here. Okay. So that's also in this direction here. Okay. And then we are going to have the friction force between the two surfaces in contact. So let's name it as what F. Okay. So this is what you are going to have. Okay. So right now what you are going to do is that let's look at our X and Y axis. Okay. So I'm going to consider this as this as my x axis okay and then this will be my y axis okay so you can see that the applied force which is the hundred pounds okay is being applied in the x axis direction okay and then the normal force okay is in the y axis direction which is what perpendicular to the plane but you see that the weight force of the block okay it's making an angle let's name that angle your theta okay with the y axis okay so we are going to talk about that angle for now okay so because this weight force is making an angle with the y axis it's going to have two components right one in the y axis direction and then one what in the x axis direction right we are going to have let's name it wy and then wx okay so I'm going to have something like this. Okay. So now, what you're going to do next is that you're going to what? Find the component of what? The weight force, right? That the block is exerting on the what? Surface, right? But before you can do that, you must know the value of what? This theta here, right? Okay. So let's look at something here. We have this inclined plane here, and then we've been given five, four, three here. That's this small triangle here. Okay. So let's say this angle is what? Theta. So that would be the same angle that you will have for this small triangle here. Okay, let's take note of that. Okay, so if you find the theta here, that same theta that you're going to be having here. Okay, the same for this point here. Okay, let me explain the reason why we have that to you. So let's say we have an inclined plane here. Okay, and this is what our theta. Okay, you have this to be our normal force. And then this is what the weight force. Okay. And then we'll have our x axis here, okay, and then our y axis here, okay. So this is what the theta that I was talking about, okay. So right now let's let's take it out. You don't have it today. So if I draw a horizontal line through this center here, you know you are going to have here to be what theta, right? Okay. So if here is theta, here will also be what theta, right? There is the opposite. Okay, all right. So we know that this angle here should give us what? 90 degrees, right? Okay, all right. So we have theta here at once. We have what? 90 minus what? Theta. Okay, so we have something like that there. Okay, so over here, we are going to have what? 90 minus what? Theta here, right? Okay, so now let's name this angle here as what? Alpha. And let's find this angle. So over here, the weight force, okay, 
we make an angle of 90 degrees with what this horizontal line that I have drawn here, right? So when you sum these two angles, we should get what 90 degrees, right? So we are going to have this angle here, alpha plus 90 minus what theta. That should give us what 90, right? So we are going to have alpha minus theta equals what 90 minus what 90. That would be what zero. So we are going to have what alpha to be equal to what theta, right? So that means you can come and write what theta here. Okay, so that's how can we have theta here. Okay, all right. So now we understand why we have theta here, right? Okay, so now let's take cosine of what this theta here. This is our three, this is our four, and then this is our five, right? So cos cosine of what theta, right? Will be equal to what the adjacent side over what the hypotenuse, right? Okay. All right, so now, cosine of theta, we have the adjacent side here, then have the hypotenuse to be five, right? And then sine of theta, we go to the opposite side of our, the hypotenuse, right? So let's consider what you have here. Okay, let's take cosine of what? Theta here, right? So the cosine of theta there, okay, cosine of theta for this side, we go to what? The adjacent, right? Which is this. So WI over the hypotenuse, which is what? The 300, right? So we're going to have W by T equal to what? 300 cosine of what? Theta, right? But we know cosine of theta to be what? 4 on 5. So we're going to have what's prime was 4 on 5. Okay. And then we know it is what? Pointing downwards, right? So that's negative. Let's take note of that. Let's do same for WS. So for WS, we're going to have 300 multiplying with sine of what? Theta, right? But we know sine theta is what? 3 on 5. So we're going to have WX to be equal to. 300 multiplying what? 3 on what? 5. Okay. All right. So now, this will be the y component of the weight force. And this will be the x component of what? The weight force. Okay. They are really important. We have to find them. Okay. So now let me clean this so that we can continue. Okay. So now the question is, we should determine whether the block is in what? Equilibrium. Okay. So how are we going to know if the block is in what? Equilibrium. So let's consider the forces in the x as a direction and the forces in the y as a direction. Okay. So considering the forces in the x as a direction, we have this force, we have the friction force, and then we have the components of what the weight force in the x as a direction, right? So before this system will be in equilibrium, when you sum up all these forces in the x as a direction, it must be equal to what is zero. And then this normal force should be able to advance the y component of what the weight force, right? So you are going to have sum of forces in the x as direction to be equal to what the 100 pounds right minus the friction force okay minus the friction force okay minus the mm -hmm. s component of what the weight force right so that was minus 300 okay multiplying 3 on 5. okay so this we got this should be equal to what zero right so now let's find the value of what f so we are going to have 100 minus 300 multiplying 3 on 5. So this will give us minus f minus what? 80 equals to what? 0. We are going to have minus f equals what? 80. And then f will equal to what? Minus what? 80. Okay. So that means that before before this system will be in equilibrium, okay, before the x forces can balance each other, this friction force, okay, must be what? 8. Okay. So now let's cut something here. When we calculate for the S component of this weight force here, which is what? 300, okay, times what? 3 on 5. When you calculate this, let's see what you're going to get. 300 times 3 on 5, you give us a value of what? 180 pounds, right? Okay. And this force, this, this, this is that force, right? So let's look at that. The applied force is going in this direction. Okay. And that's what 100 pounds. And then the S component of the weight force is going in this direction, which is what 180 pounds. Right. So you see that already the Y component, the S component of the weight force is bigger than this, right? Before you'll be able to what, balance this, you must have another force, which is what the friction force. And that friction force must also act in this direction, right? It must also act in this direction. So that's what 
when we add this and this, you get what 180, and then this is what also 180, but they're in the opposite direction. Okay, so F will actually be in what in this direction, in other words, for this block to be what to be balanced. Okay, so we are going to have F which will be actually 80 pounds, right? And it should be printed in the what positive x as a direction so that's what to be able to what balance this okay when we add it to this value okay but well, this guy is already printing here and it's what 180 and then this one is printing in this direction which is what 100 okay so if you point the friction force in this direction it can't balance the 180 here okay? so that because that would be what 100 minus so what 80 and then that'll give us what 20 and then that 20 can't balance it so the friction must move in this direction Okay, so that's why you have what 80 pounds and you have a direction in that way. Okay, so what that means is that before this system will be in equilibrium, okay, before this system will be in equilibrium, okay, the friction force, okay, in the x axis direction might be equal to what 80 pounds, okay. So let's consider the forces in the y axis direction. So for that one also, you have the normal force, which is positive, minus what the y component of force, the weight force. So that's what minus what. 300 multiplying cosine of what theta and that's what form five right so let's see what we are going to get this is going to give us a value for 240 pounds okay so now for this system to be in equilibrium the normal force must be 240 pounds right. and then the friction force must also be what 80 pounds and then this must be must go in this direction and then the normal force must also go in this what direction now the direction of what the positive y as it okay for equilibrium to be maintained okay so now what you are going to do next is that you want to determine whether the block is not equilibrium or not right so let's look at how we are going to do that so what condition are you going to use to tell whether the block is in equilibrium or is it sort sliding okay so let's look at how you are going to detect that for us to know whether the block will be in equilibrium or will be sliding what you have to do is that you have to find the maximum section which will be generated between the block and then the surface and then compare it to what the friction force that we need what to maintain what equilibrium if that value is equal to that friction force then that means what equilibrium will be what maintained but if it is less that means what there will be what no equilibrium which means the block will, what, will be sliding down so now let's find the actual maximum friction that will be here okay that will be what will be here when you consider what this figure here so we are going to have fm to be equal to the coefficient of what static friction because we are considering the equilibrium. So we are going to use coefficient of what static friction then for the normal force, right? So we know the coefficient of static friction is what zero point what two five, right? And then we know the normal force to both twenty and forty five times what twenty and what forty. So we are going to have zero point two five times what twenty and what forty. So that gives us the maximum friction force to both. 60 pounds. Okay, so let's look at something here. We need 80 pounds for this system to be in equilibrium, otherwise, what the block would slide. But now let's find out that the maximum friction, okay, that will be present as a result of what the surface of the block and then the the inclined plane being in contact is actually what 60, which is not equal to what the friction for that we need for the equilibrium what to be maintained. Okay, so because this value here is less than what we need to maintain equilibrium the block is going towards slide okay so look at something here it's like we have 100 pounds here and then we have what 50 pounds here right if we add this to this okay that was 160 right and then that cannot balance what the 180 pounds for that we have here so because of that the block what will slide than was in this direction okay so due to that the block will not be what in equilibrium okay so that means what we've answered this part. We tell where the block is in equilibrium, right? We've answered this part. So now let's find the value of what the friction force. So right now we think that the block is not in equilibrium. That means what it is sliding, right? So if it is sliding, what will happen? There's going to be another friction, okay, which was tries what to resist what the sliding motion. And that friction is known as what the kinetic friction. So that's the friction you have to find now, since the block is what sliding. So you are going to have that friction to be equal to the coefficient of what kinetic friction times what the normal force, right? And this value was given to us as what, 0 0.2, so times the normal force times what 240, so that what 0 0.2 times what 240, this will give us a value of what 
48 pounds. So that means that none of the block is sliding. The friction force that is going to be present with what this 48 pounds that we have here. Okay, so that's how to go about this kind of question. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, kindly make sure you subscribe and like the video. Thank you.